In this section, we're going to discuss Julie collections. Julie has many different types of collections. Uh, we already looked at some like arrays and dictionaries previously, but we only looked at them sort of superficially, you know, hands on for how to use them. And we haven't talked much about the common traits among collections. You can use a lot of the same functions regardless of what operations you're using. And we haven't looked at how you create your own collections. So those are things we're going to explore. Um, and while I did cover uh, arrays, uh, I only show the one dimensional part, but Julie arrays are actually a multi-dimensional arrays. So we're going to look more at how that works. And both for arrays and uh, sets, which we haven't covered, you can do a number of set operations like union, intersection that are useful to know about. Now over to the first video in this section, we're going to talk about common traits. So by common traits, I mean the ability to use a lot of the same functions, regardless of the particular collection. So by that, I mean things like map, reduce, sum, uh, the fact that you can check any collection, whether it's empty, um, you can loop over any, almost any collection. How is actually those kind of things accomplished? And we're going to explain how that works by me implementing a, a linked list. And the first, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the data structure. So how do we actually create the linked list data structure? And then the next thing would be implementing the uh, collection interfaces that allows the linked list to actually be used as a regular Julia collection. Before we do any implementation is worth talking about what exactly is a linked list? What does it look like? And I like to contrast it with a regular array because that's what most people are already familiar with. So an array has all its elements in contiguous memory. So it means that every element follows each other in memory. Uh, that's quite different from a linked list where the elements are scattered about and they're just um, linked to each other. So the benefit for arrays is that you got random access. I can uh, get the uh, the element four here, which is on the third index by just specifying index three. That wouldn't be possible for a linked list because the third element here is referred to by a pointer, which would be some arbitrary number that you couldn't predict ahead of time. So the only way to find that pointer is by starting at the beginning and traversing the linked list. So let's look at what we need to do to implement a node. Well, first of all, uh, this is a node. And it can have a value and it has a next field. So those are the two first fields uh, that we're going to define. And then we need a function or a constructor to, um, to create an empty list. Uh, Julia doesn't have uh, nil, so we can't use um, set the next is nil to indicate that we're at the end of the list. So instead, what we're doing is we're sending that the node points to itself uh, when we're at the end. So the question mark indicates that we're not initializing it with any value. So this represents the end of the collection. Uh, and of course, we need a, a regular constructor for um, the typical case where we have a value and a next node. And both these functions are defined inside the type. So there's only these ways of uh, creating it or manipulating the member fields. Next important thing is to be able to add elements. And you can see we're not calling this push as we would for an array because uh, in array we're adding elements at the end, but that's not what's most efficient to do with a linked list. So if we were uh, building up a linked list, we would start by creating the dummy node, and then we could basically unshift individual values onto it. And as you can see that it's growing 
at the beginning because of how the next pointer points to the next element, it makes more sense to add elements at the start. So we're going to define also a convenience functions for creating a list where you're using unshift here. And since unshift, when it takes the values in, it's actually reversing them. When I'm specifying the list one, uh, three, and five, I'm actually getting that sequence because I'm actually adding the five first and then the three and then one. Now we have the actual structure, but we can't do one of the most important things for lists. The question is, how do we actually loop over lists? If I define this uh, list here, L, and I try to loop over L and print out each element, I'm going to get this error message. And we get a hint here of what's required. It says that there is no matching method start that takes uh, node arguments. So what we have to do, uh, we can learn by looking at a typical example for looping over an array. So you've probably seen that case like this multiple times already. What this would actually translate into Julia under the hood is this code. It's a while loop where we where start uh, function gives us an index or an iterator for the beginning of a collection, excess in this uh, case. And then we need another function done to check whether the i iterator or index in this particular case has reached the end of the collection. And next we'll return a tuple x and y, which represents the current value x and the next iterator value, or you might call it state of the iteration. And again, in this case for an array, that's just simply the index. So there's three elements we have to implement for uh, our linked list. So the first thing is uh, the start, and we can just use the, um, the, the start node as it is. For the next node, we just return a tuple with the current value, and um, we use the next field to get to the next node. Pretty simple. And for done, we just check whether we reach our uh, dummy node where uh, it points to itself. So one thing, the nice thing about implementing this is that previously we couldn't do a join with the elements. We would get this error message out. But now that we have um, iteration working, we can write something like this and get two comma three comma four as outputs. And that is handy because it helps us implement the show method. So this is something that you should do for all your data types that you want to have a nice output in the REPL environment for how they, they looked in textual form. So you can see here that we have the join part in the middle. So this allows us uh, when we're writing the list in the REPL environment, we're getting this nice output here. So by only implementing these three function, we get a lot of common functionality. So let's just create a list in the REPL. And now we can check if it's empty, that's false. If we create the dummy node, that would be uh, true. So we didn't actually have to we didn't actually have to implement uh, is empty to get this functionality. And of course, we can loop over the elements and get them out. And furthermore, uh, we can add up all the elements. We can uh, map the elements. In this case, I'm squaring each element. And we can do the product. So multiplying each element and getting the the product. Or I could look at the maximum element, which is four, or the minimum element, which would be two. If I try to do collect, on the other hand, I will get this error message. So it says that we don't have a length. So there's something more that we would have to implement to support this. The reason for this is that collect needs to know the size typically, because it's pre-allocating an array and filling that with elements. But that is an inefficient way of doing it for linked list because 
it's a linear operation to get the size. So what we want to do is tell Julia that the size is unknown. And we can do that with this implementing this function, uh, iterator size, uh, by creating a method for, for node and saying that size is unknown. Now, how did I know what to put there? Well, if you go to the help environment and look up iterator size, you will get this message. And uh, one of the options here says size unknown, which is what I used. And has length is, of course, the default, which requires you to implement the length function. So let's do a recap. You got to implement some collection interfaces to actually create a collection in Julia. And a lot of functionality follows from simply implementing start, next, and done. Extra functionality, of course, will require other functions.